like to start by saying uh, the, the Cincinnati team is absolute incredible effort, toughness, uh, the way they played us defensively. Um, I got a lot of respect for Luke Fickle and his team. The quarterback they got is a talented man. And for people to try to take shots at their, at their conference or their level of play, you know, they got a really, really good quality football team and a lot of seniors on that team. I'd also like to thank uh, Chick-fil-A Pete Cole, Gary Stoke and his staff. I'm telling you guys, where they've taken this bowl, where it started when bad team like I was on played in it to now uh, New Year's Six and being part of a special bowl package, the city of Atlanta, home of college football. They got the best thing going, and they do an unbelievable job. Chick-fil-A is one of the best companies in the world. I always say, if I can run my organization like Chick-fil-A, I can be successful in the same way with the Peach Bowl. So we thank them for that. And then these seniors, look, they tied the winningest record of any senior class to come through, and they really got slighted. So we're going to remove the asterisk and erase it because with the Vanderbilt game, they would have been able to get that done and certainly want to respect the job they did. And uh, I just appreciate the guys never quitting and continuing to fight. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function within Zoom. We'll call on people individually and please be sure to uh, say who you're directing your question to. We'll go ahead and start with Charles Odom from the Associated Press. <clears throat> Kirby, on, on, on the play before the game-winning kick, you tried a deep pass. Were you confident in your kicker um, being able to make it from that distance without having to make a shorter completion to, to, to help, his, help his cause? Great question. We go through that situation probably every week. You can ask our players. We do it all the time. Uh, it was a must situation. Coach Munkin calls it must get out of bounds. Okay, must get out of bounds or get a completion for five yards. They had a really good call on. They brought pressure, they trapped the flat, and they brought a guy up the top, which is like a perfect call. They knew what they were doing. They knew we had to throw the ball out of bounds. We told JP it's either a shot out of bounds or throw it or throw a completion in the flat. And uh, JT made a good decision, uh, threw the ball. I would have loved it if he'd hit it probably a little flatter. He might have got Jermaine for a touchdown, but they took a chance, and we wanted to take a chance if they were going to match blitz us. But yeah, I felt comfortable. That's 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 within uh Pod's reign. Pod came and told me before the game he felt good around 37. So I think we were. Inside 37 at that time. Question from Chip Towers. Yeah, th this is for Kirby. I, I, I guess strategy. Obviously, you may, you know, you're taking a, a, a chance there on on punting the ball with the, the time left. But unbelievable play by your defense. So I think we all understand it. Uh, what, what did you just? What were you thinking at that moment? And uh, and then can you just comment on your defense's play in the fourth quarter in particular? Yeah, I probably agree with you, Chip. I mean, it's one of those that looking back, you know, you still got the timeouts. You still got an opportunity to stop them. So it's one of those, I felt good to get it. We had gone for some fourth downs earlier that were probably longer than that even. Um, I always believe if you've got momentum and stopping people and defensively, I don't know how many three and outs we had had or felt like we had momentum back. And we have a, a history here of, we call it get the ball back for a minute. We got to stop them to get the ball back. And I felt com confident we could stop them with our timeouts. Um, so we called one to, to not spend it on the punt. And then we called two. We actually gave up a first down. Give them credit. They had a good four-minute plan. And the play they actually ran was a play we worked on down in the red area. It's a pick flat. And I received it. tried to play the flat and let his man go deep and then recovered and actually got the ball out, which was, you know, probably the play of the game. If they complete that – we, we don't have a chance to win and uh, did, did a heck of a job. But looking back, maybe we should have gone for it there. Question from Brandon Sudge. Hey, uh, this is for Kirby and uh, JT. But can y'all kind of uh, walk me through the emotions of James and his father passing away? Um, what was the significance of those uh, tributes with Jameer holding up four fingers and Dell um, having his jersey on. And do you feel like you guys kind of won this game in honor of him and for his family? I'll let Aziz have that first. I mean, I'll let uh, JT have that first. Yeah. Um, so James and I have been very close since I got here. Uh, I remember when I hosted my, uh, you know, commitment to Georgia, uh, Cook hit me right away. Um, uh, told me to call him. I got in contact with him. He was he was one of the first people I buddied up with. 
Uh, and he's really been like a brother to me since I got here. Uh, as soon as I found out the news, I hit him, uh, made sure he's doing good. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a leader. He's a worker. You never hear him complain. Uh, you know, you know, he's always doing the right thing. And when something like, you know, something bad happens to something good like that, uh, it, it sits with you. And, you know, it was something that us as a team, you know, we all thought about it. We all had it. You know, you saw Coach Dell with the four jersey. Um, that's how much Cook means to us and, you know, how much we're there for him when he needs it. And we know he'd be there for us when we need him. Next question from Connor Riley. Uh, yeah, this is for Aziz. You have three sacks today. Uh, why was it important for you to play in this game? And have you thought at all about what your future is, whether that be in the NFL or at Georgia? Uh, it was important for me just to make sure the seniors go out the right way in their last game because, they, you know, they worked so hard in this unpredictable season. So you never know. He's got an opportunity to play another game. So I took advantage of it, play with my brothers. It was great. Next question from Mike Griffin. Kirby, uh, obviously you've won, you've won a lot of big games. I think this is your 10th win over a top 10 team. But this season, this pandemic, to win in this style with your defense shutting them down the last really two quarters outside that run and then the offense, the long field, it looked like everything came together in the final minute, I don't know if it could have gotten any closer, just your satisfaction level and what this victory means to you now. Well, I'm certainly proud of our team and I'm proud of the adversity we went through throughout the year with the pandemic. I don't think we played our best game today. I thought I'd give my hats off to Cincinnati. They did a really good job uh, defensively controlling our run game and offensively keeping us off balance enough with their quarterback run game, which we knew he was a good athlete. We knew he was a good runner probably didn't give him enough credit. We couldn't finish on him in the first half. And, you know, they stole a touchdown right there at the end of the uh, half, and they stole one back in, 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 the, uh, in the start of the second half. But I'm really proud of these guys and how hard they fought. I mean, I don't think anybody really truly understands, not just Georgia, but how hard it was on entire college football to be persistent and go this long and practice this long. And I, my hat goes off to the, the guys in the room. Last question from Anthony Dasher. Hey, JT, uh, just uh, wondering, um, going through the emotions of this football game and, and watching uh, you know, Jack, you know, line up to keep that field goal, uh, just kind of what goes through a guy's mind. Are you, are you watching the play or are you just closing your eyes? Kind of what was going on at that point in time? Uh, there are definitely a lot of emotions and, you know, um, it's a field goal to win from 53. Uh, I'll tell you this, I trust in pod. Um, you know, about as much as I can. Um, I felt no pressure to try and make a play I didn't need to when we we're on the 35. Uh, you know, that's what Pod does. We see it every day in practice. Uh, he's always, always on time, always doing his job. We see him, uh, you know, Monday through Friday. You see him hitting all his kicks. Uh, you know, I, I definitely say I had trust in Pod, but uh, it's, it's last second, yeah, I was on the knee. I was, you know, I, I was saying some prayers right there. Next question from Charlie Goldsmith. Yeah, um, Aziz, were you kind of surprised that uh, UC left you guys as much time as they did by throwing the ball some uh, on that last uh, full drive they had and by um, by snapping the ball with time on the clock? Can you, I didn't really hear you. I couldn't hear, I couldn't understand you either. Sorry about that. Um, on UC's last like full drive, they snapped the ball with time on the clock and they uh, threw the ball a, a couple times. Were you surprised that's how they handled it down the stretch? Uh, I mean, you know, that's what we wanted to do it, you know, try to score, or get, always get first down. So we just stayed with we execution, executed what we had to execute and just kept playing hard. Next question comes from Seth Emerson. For JT, uh, you're still new to this program relatively. What's this ride the last two months been like since you became the starter in 4 0? And, and what does it say? to you about this Georgia team and program? Yeah, at this point, I feel like I've been here for years. Um, instantly when I came in, I felt a connection with the team and a, a connection with the way that this program's run uh, it is the way I would say it. We're, we're football, for, you know, we're all about ball. Uh, it, it, it's a, you know, something you can say about pretty much this whole team is that everyone just loves football. Uh, we're here, we're here to, you know, do our thing and be the best players we can be in every single day, uh, every single practice. You know, Malik Herring, uh, you know, Zeus, 
George, everyone goes out, practices to their best ability every single day with a focus on getting better. Um, you know, over the last two and a half months, I've, you know, really just enjoyed the time of, you know, being with like-minded guys that are all about work, all about ball, and all about competing. We have a few minutes left for, uh, for this group. Uh, so we'll get in as many questions as we can. Next one comes from Mark Weiser. Hey, hey, Kirby, obviously you guys are, are elated with, with the finish. If the kick had not gone through the uprights, do you think you would have an entirely different feeling heading into this offseason? I mean, is, is it all right on that 53 yards? I said it before, Mark, you know, it was going to be the highs of high and the lows of low. And really, it, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. You know, everybody believes in momentum. Um, I would feel much better if we just played our best game. And I don't think that we played our best game. And I want to give Cincinnati credit for that. They created some of that. But the narrative was out there that, you know, our team want to be here and, and they didn't want to they didn't want to practice on it. That was never true. Our guys practiced hard and they played a really good, uh, motivated football team that was trying to remain undefeated. So to answer your question, I would not feel any different, but the perception would certainly be different, all based off of two more yards or, or less or however far he cleared it. Next question from Jed May. Uh, hey, Kirby. Um, I guess on defense, you, especially you had a lot of guys that I guess had stepped in and, and got a lot of playing time today. Just what can you say about the job guys like Quay Walker and, and Latavius Brini, those guys did today? And also, I just wanted to ask you again about James Cook and, you know, the way uh, the team, I guess, stepped up and honored him today. Yeah. Uh, first off, the defensive guys, you know, we had a lot of guys playing out of position, guys down. It was a really tough week in the secondary. Um, you know, we had Tyreek having to move the corner. He's also the backup star. Uh, Brainy was having to play. Um, we had a couple days there where he was possibly out uh, with, with protocol, and then he was back in. Uh, Jermaine Burton wasn't around. I mean, nobody really knows what went on in the last seven days that creates uh, major issues. Uh, Trevon Walker not able to be with us today. He had some great practices. I mean, it just was like it changed every day, and you couldn't find a rhythm to say this is where guys are going to play. And uh, they rose up today. They played better as the game went on, I thought. Brainy got more and more comfortable as the game went on, but it's tough. Okay, we've got time for two more. We'll take one from Austin Roper, and then we'll finish up with one from Jonathan Simmons. Austin? Uh, hey, Kirby. Um, so I want to take it back to Jack a little bit if I can. Um, this is the, the first time where he's really had to, um, you know, kind of shoulder load it and make a, a late kick to win the game. Was there anything you said before he went onto the field or did you sense how he was feeling emotionally um, leading into that kick? I mean, what can you kind of describe how that was? I don't mess with Jack. Uh, I don't mess with kickers. I let them do their thing. I, I don't want to mess with their mojo, their rhythm. I don't say anything to them. I mess with them some days in practice, but I didn't mess with them today. I felt comfortable with where he was that we would have the leg strength to get there. I mean, that's about the spot that we work on it every week uh, during two minutes that I say, hey, if we get to that spot, we're going to be able to make the field goal. Probably the best thing that happened is he didn't have long to think about it. You know, they were out of timeouts, and it was important that we get out there and get set because you're going to delay a game in the heat of the moment. And, hey, get out there, snap it. They can't organize a rush. We do it every week, and uh, he drilled it. Johnson, last question. Jonathan Simmons, last question. Yes, congratulations to the entire Georgia team for this big victory. Congratulations to you, Coach uh, Smart, for that juke move to avoid a third uh, Gatorade bath when you were moving out. And my question is to Akees. Akees, what was the key for you guys, especially in the second half, from shutting down that Cincinnati offense? Yeah, oh. Cool. Oh, he's asking me. Oh, that's for you, Akees. Yeah, that's for you. Yep. What was oh, the key uh, for you guys in the second <laughs> half? <laughs> oh, no, nah, I mean, we just stayed within the game plan and came out there and just executed, just did everything the coaches wanted us to do and just made sure we had to get his win for the seniors, the team, just the momentum. We just used it and it helped us our way. Yeah. Coach Smart, JT, Aziz, congratulations and thank you. And uh, we'll bring in our next group of student athletes here shortly. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.